trench mob testimonies where we dive into how your test became your testimony. What's going on, trench mob family? I'm Jeremy Hawkins. And I'm Tony Davis. And man, we're coming to you tonight. And we want to talk about some, you know, trench mob, some trench talk, some D1 right. talk. Um, some, some kind of current stuff that kind of went on here when you look at the, the NFL draft here recently. You got you got Georgia, um, one of the top defenses in the nation. Uh, they had two first round trenches guys that get picked up um, in Nolan right. Smith and Big also, Carter. yeah, Jalen Carter, man. Um, you know, those guys, man, I tell you, um, they've done some amazing things in college. <laughs> And and so far in the Philadelphia Eagles camp, uh, when I see all the reports about how Nolan Smith, Smith is one of the fastest guys off the edge, and he showed it, and, and he showed it in the combine, right? He he ran a four three nine, man. It was it was crazy seeing how fast he was as a, as an actual edge rusher, man. Imagine, you know, trying to uh, protect your your defensive line, you know, protect your quarterback against. Somebody like that, you know, running a four three nine, man. Right. I, I, know, I know you, um, Coach Davis. You were actually in Georgia and, and got a chance to see Jalen Carter and Nolan Smith at practice, man. Can you talk about your experiences there? Absolutely, man. Um, and let me tell you right now, uh, shout out to Trey Scott, man, for allowing me that opportunity. Um, you know, every year they kind of do like a, a, a high school coaches convention, uh, essentially, where you know high school coaches come and they watch practice and you know they you know they're just kind of all over the field you know observing and just you know taking notes uh but you know i actually got a chance to sit in the defensive meetings uh with the d staff and and every, all of the players um then i was able to go in there uh, and position me with coach scott so i appreciate him for allowing me that opportunity but one thing i can tell you man is that nolan smith was the unquestioned uh leader uh, in that on that defense uh, that year, um, I mean, when they had that meeting, he spoke like he was the one speaking, um, you know, when they're watching film, he's giving the calls, the checks. You know, he was the captain. He was the, the admiral, uh, if you will, uh, in that meeting room. Then once we switched over uh, to position positionally, uh, having an opportunity to sit in there with the D line and Jalen Carter was, was the guy. He was the alpha guy. And then he got up. He spoke. He talked about fronts, um, even just techniques and, and just how how they should play it and where they should set the front, the adjustment they should make. I mean, it was like clockwork. I mean, them guys was on it. There was literally coaches in each respective of their room, man. And um, so then after that, you know, they kind of took the field. And it's crazy because, you know, I, I tell my, my guys this all the time, you know, the guys, they don't look as big as they do. Once they put pads on, you know, I'm sitting in the, I'm sitting in the, you know, the meeting room, you know, with these guys and I'm kind of just eyeing them as they, you know, come in the door and I'm like, oh, you know, he, he's he nice size, big, but man, they step down, they feel, they put them pads on, they like it grew two, two inches on, and, and got bigger. I'm like, oh, this, this dude's double his size. So I'm like, holy cow. Um, but, um, you know, just watching them dudes practice, man. And I just speak on Jalen Carter, dude. I was able to, Followed them through all the endo, participated in, in, in several. But, but the one thing that stood out, man, was this guy's just natural raw power. I, I tell my guys all the time, I've never felt the amount of power from his force and me. I'm just standing on the sled. Like I'm not, I'm just standing on it so it don't move. And they were doing, uh, four point explosions. And and six point layout, dude. And this dude, I'm to my. I thought he was gonna break the sled, man. It was that much force and natural power coming out. I, I've never felt nothing like that from a, all of my years of just coaching guys and being around guys. But having the opportunity to be around a, a talent like Jalen, uh, it was different, man. It it it, it, it was eye opening. Uh, the, the amount of just power that this dude had, and um, and it translated once they got into the the uh, eleven on eleven work. Uh, two minute drills. I mean, dudes making plays left and right. Um, and in the same for as Nolan, you know, Nolan played the outside back position. So, you know, they would do this drill where it's kind of like a uh, nine on nine where, you know, it's, it's seven on seven, but you have the two, uh, extra guys that are in there to rush. And so they have an offensive line protect and they have an edge guy blitzing as well. So, uh, I thought it was very unique, um, to watch him move and also drop. And some of this stuff, he just moves so fluently. And like you said, the speed, I mean, the speed speaks for itself. Uh, having a force coming off the edge like him 
with, with all that speed and then Jalen bringing the pressure up the middle, you can obviously you can see why they, you know, won national championships with that with that unit and why Philly, you know, decided to get about six or seven guys from that defense because the new guys were salty. But uh, just having an opportunity to actually watch them work, man, just professional, um, you know, just things that. You know, you you when when you coaching your guys, you say, well, you shouldn't have to coach effort. You don't have to coach, you know, certain things. And, and those guys are exemplary, exemplary uh, examples of that. Man, them dudes come to work. They pro like. They communicate at a high level. Like everyone's talking. Um, but the, I mean, but the main two guys though, uh, Jalen, he, he he definitely controls that that room, and, and you know, uh, Nolan controls that the outside back room. Man, it was pretty unique to watch. And that's a beautiful thing because when you think about it, <clears throat> when they were going through that process of, of getting ready for the draft, right, um, you know, everybody spoke well of Nolan Smith. No off-the-field issues, nothing to that nature. High character. High-character guy, right? You, you get to Jalen Carter. In the building, everybody speaks highly of him, you know. That's right. But, you know, outside looking in, you know, the, the people outside of the building weren't, you know, as bought in on – Jalen Carter as they was with Nolan Smith. But when you talk to Trey Scott and when you talk to the people in that building, you know, uh, he's been nothing but a great person. He, he's done the right things on the field and off the field. I mean, you know, he, he had a situation where he was speeding. Okay, man, look, uh, when you're that age in college and you, you're just having a good time, sometimes you make those mistakes as a young you know, um, young adult, you know, young man. As we all have. As we as we all have, man. This is what it is. But when it comes to him, you know, being that dog on that field, man, and, and it's crazy you talked about how guys didn't look that big. I'm going to tell you one person who did, Jordan Davis. Oh, my know. gosh. <laughs> man, look, when I, was, when I was there walking through the hallways and I seen Jordan Davis, I was like, man, that is a man. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? He's like at, at least 6'6", six, 6'7". Six, six, you know, 340. I'm like, what is that? Like, is that <laughs> like he's different, man? So, oh, yeah. You know, and Jalen was playing behind guys like that. He was coming off the bench last year, man. I'm That's not right. Asking, two years ago, he was coming off the bench. That's and right. to be a first round pick himself a year later, that that's a testament to the recruiting that George is doing. It's a testament to Trey Scott, how he's coaching those guys up to 100%. be, you know, great defense alignment. And man, hats, hats off and kudos to. Coach Scott, man, he's a dog in, in, in his own right, and what he does. Um, he's had a ton of first rounders here here recently, and man, he's gonna have plenty more. On plenty more, rounders. you know. He got Stackhouse in the room right now. Um, That's right. You know, Stackhouse gonna be a, a top defensive tackle coming out. You know, absolutely. He, a, he has a good season. He's gonna be a first rounder. And, absolutely. You know, kind of just sticking back with with Jalen Carter and, and Nolan Smith, man, and, and talking currently now with them being with the Philadelphia Eagles. Just watching them and, and, and clips and, and seeing how, you know, the other day when you seen Jalen Carter have that first step and a, a club rip and, and he's in the backfield, he getting pressure on the quarterback. Instantly, Instantly man. The first play. His first snap. His first ever NFL snap, man. So that was ridiculous, man. And, and it just, like I said, the kid is just – talent is unquestionable. Like I said, the, the physical traits, unquestionable. Right. I, I'm excited to see what he does this year, man. Both of them guys, man. Right, you and me both. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see what Philly does. I mean, everybody's oh, calling man. the the, the um, Georgia North. I guess you could say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, literally. I think what well, they got like nine of the guys from the championship team. It's a lot on, on their roster. Lot. It's a lot. I mean, man. goodness gracious! But I mean, it also speaks to the culture that that Philly is establishing and, and has. You know, with leadership, obviously on both sides, you know, with offense with Jalen Hurts, but on the defensive side, having those guys with that championship experience and know how to work, man, and come from a good program like Georgia, come in ready made. There you go. And, you and know, it's it's a beautiful thing when you think about, you know, we, we're seeing talking about the trenches, right? You know, trench mob testimonies. And, you know, it, when, when you when I talk about defensive line play, and I know when you talk about it, we're passionate about it. That, that's that's right. what it's about, man. These guys are playing passionate football up front. Um, and, and it's not just something that they – it's not a job to them. You can tell. Right. Especially Nova Smith. He loves it, man. That dude. Love the he, game. He bleeds it, bro. He bleeds it. Like, you, when you talk to him, you can tell he's a bona fide leader. He's going to be that guy 
that's going to keep that team up at all times. You know, when you when you look at it, sometimes I've been in a bunch of NFL camps and even worked with the Tennessee Titans and, and kind of seen how um, business like it is in, in the building. Mm-hmm. Sometimes. sometimes you need a guy like Nolan Smith um, to kind of just, you know, bring that uh, college atmosphere in the locker room, bring that college mentality on the field and, Guys are just upbeat and happy, and it's not a job. Having fun with it. It's having fun, man. And That's that, right. That could be a reason why, you know, I'm going to go on a limb. I'm going to say, you Your know. Predictions? <laughs> prediction time? Prediction oh. time real quick. We're gonna, oh, okay. We're gonna hit prediction time real quick. I'm going to go on a, on a limb and say, if Philly is not back in the Super Bowl, then it's because of a major injury with their quarterback. Knock on wood. We hope that doesn't happen to, um, to Jalen Hurts. You know, root to the bros. But we hope they don't happen to him. We want to see him be successful. But if if they're healthy, man, I feel like they have a chance to go win the Super Bowl for sure. You know, in my eyes, when you look at it, they, they, they only got better. <laughs> yeah. they, only, they only got better. They didn't lose. They kept all their players. No, I think they lost, the, they lost the tailback. But, I mean, they, they could but replace they, him. But they got another Georgia guy. They got Swift. That's right. From, from That's right. Detroit. That's you know, right. So, and look, we can go into a foxhole with Philly, man. But for sure, Jalen Carter, Nolan Smith, two dogs, man. They got two good ones. I think. I think they're going to be successful very fast for Philly. All right. So I want to transition. I actually with, hold on one more prediction. One okay. more prediction. Talk, talk to me. I, you know, listen. I, I'm, I'm going to say it right now. Jalen Carter will have ten plus sacks, and Nolan Smith will have ten plus sacks this year. Man, I'm calling it right oh, now. So. Right now, Tony Davis right now. and Jalen Carter, interior. You can D-line. book it. You can book it. Hey, hey uh, interior D lineman, inside, not outside, not on the edge. D lineman, book it. Rookie is gonna have ten plus sex. Book it, man. Hey, I can't wait. Hey, to get back bar, bar injury, bar injury. You can book it. Yeah, no you, doubt. You can book uh, it. Of course, we we. I you know we, we already gonna say that bar an injury for sure. You get it got to be. He got to be clean. You know Bucket. he's gonna be banged up a little bit, but it's D line. But you ain't gonna no injuries. Hurt is different than being injured. If he's hurt playing through that, it's fine. But man, look, it can happen. I, I I for sure see Nolan Smith. You know, getting in that um, range for sure, man. Just being that edge guy, it, it's it's kind of mm-hmm. easier, right? Um, that's kind of what you see with edge guys anyway. That's um, right. Man, ten interior. Ten. ten. I'm coming. How many how many times has Aaron Donald had ten plus sacks in the season? I think it's been like what maybe five five seasons. He had ten plus sacks. Yeah, he, he didn't have ten plus sacks last year, did he? Uh, I don't think so. Um, you know they yeah, kind of moving him all over the place just to hide him. Yeah. But you can you can and, and you got to think even you know I know we we on our Philly train right now, but um, even just the guys last year they too deep the, the ones and the twos. Right, dude. Right. right. Six of them guys had ten sacks. <laughs> wow, like, crazy! It was crazy. Like the numbers, the numbers that they put up last year was insane as a unit. Like it, it was probably one of the the best units historically. Uh, probably right. that we don't the NFL don't see, man. Literally, that, that's crazy, man. But I, I can see that happening though. When you say I ten sacks with Jalen Carter, I mean I can see it. To be honest with you, if the type of defense that Georgia runs is the same type of defense that I run here. At, we run here at EKU. Um, and sometimes it's not as um, sexy for mm-hmm. interior D linemen. But the things that he was doing, the traits that he has, man, if he, if, if he can get on the edge of a man like he did the first snap. That's of right. His NFL career. And he consistently, you know, gets better every week, which I know he will. <laughs> He can do it. I, look, Absolutely. I don't even think that's really a bold prediction, bro. <laughs> no, I, I think I th- he, he may get more. Like I may be selling him short, but right. you know, I think ten he can definitely achieve ten. No doubt, no doubt. And, and kind of transitioning. Um, so we went from the Georgia Bulldogs to the Philadelphia Eagles, and now we transition to the um, Clemson Tigers. You know, with Miles Murphy and, and uh, Breesy. Uh, so. Those two, two guys, first rounders, two first rounders from Clemson, man. Murphy went to the Cincinnati Bengals. Shout out to Bengals. You already know what it is. Love you, baby. Appreciate you. <laughs> and I think um, Brisa went to the Saints. Yep, to the Saints. Um, yep. And I actually met Miles Murphy um, at an OTA 
um, this this off season here. Um, went up there with Coach Hobby. Um, good guy, man. Good person. Allowed me to come in to practices and watch practice and sit in sit in meetings, rookie meetings, um, and just you know, you know, um, just be a fly on the wall, learn from them, talk some ball. Sure. Um, Miles Murphy is a, a old soul, I think. You know, just kind of being around him, he's he's not one of those first rounders where he's just. Yeah, he's needy. He don't need all this and that. He, he comes in. He's he wants to work hard. He he, he wants to. He's eager to learn. Um, he, he's behind a bunch of guys that are been some good sack getters at, at Cincinnati, and he's learning from them. Even at practice, man, he's doing all the rookie stuff still. You know, it don't matter if he's a first rounder or not. He's doing all the rookie stuff. And when I say rookie stuff, it, you know, he's picking up the bags. He's moving the bags. That's right. Carrying stuff like he's 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 a regular person, and you can tell mm-hmm. he's. He's locked in on what he wants to do. But I tell you this right here, man. I watched one drill. And uh, Coach Hobby was like, watch this. I'm telling you. He said, this son of a gun is fast, man. That's why we got him. Mm-hmm. So he lined up the entire D-line and um, egged the, the, the DNs first. Mm-hmm. The playoffs, he did it by, you know, vets and rooks first. Mm-hmm. Vet, you know, you had, you know, I ain't going to say no names, but he was winning. All right. The vets were, yeah. they were doing their thing. But Miles Murphy were killing the rooks. And, yeah, uh, the newbies, and then he put Miles in the group with the vets, with the get offs. Man, every one, bro, he was winning by like a step. Wow, <laughs> Hobby was like after practice, he was like, "Yeah, that's that's why we got him, bro." That's that's uh, right. And with any, what, what's his framework? What are you like six four? How big yeah, is like, how big like is Miles? Six four and a half. You know, um, two sixty five, two seventy ish. Um. I don't think he – I think he can get thicker, to be honest with mm-hmm. you. He has a lower frame that's kind of like, man, look like he's about 230, but he's taller and longer with it. That's um, right. And he's explosive and powerful with his lower body. It don't look like he's, you know, meant for that, but he can play the run too. Mm-hmm. You know, and, you know, Nick Easton, man, shout out to Nick Easton. He did his thing. He's doing his thing. That's right. Uh, with, with the Clemson Tigers. And, heck, I met Nick when he was at the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, Bengals. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and um you know so one thing about it is if he's gonna coach in the right way just like we talked about trey scott he's gonna make sure that those guys are you know pro ready because he's been a professional himself that's right he actually nick, nick easton actually played at clemson was uh, all everything at clemson got drafted played in the nfl for you know uh almost a decade mm-hmm. um and 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 coached in it for almost a decade um so i'm sure um it's going to be some calls to him if it hasn't already. Um, That's right. Go, go back to the NFL. But, man, he has those guys, NFL training, NFL ready. Uh, you're talking about Brian Breesey, um, you know, from the DMV area, from Maryland. Um, everybody remembers his highlight, high school highlight, right? Ridiculous. I mean, this dude was a, a, a man amongst children, and it was like taking candy from a baby every snap. I mean, it was ridiculous. I mean, he was just killing them kids, man. It, it, Sometimes, you know, because I was at LSU recruiting a kid and I just watching this film from from high school, I'm like, man, I don't even know how can I can evaluate this. These these little boys that he's playing against. <laughs> right. Par, but, man, it, it worked out for me. He's actually 100%. man. He's a dog. He's a dog. So technical. So technical. A lot of people talk about him not being a first round pick, though, bro. They didn't have him in the first round. They had him in a second round. Some people had him lower second round. But, man, when it comes down to it, what he did on the field, and he was going through a lot of injuries his last two that's years. Right. That's right. That's right. And that's probably why. Or maybe, you know, maybe they didn't think he passed the eye test, but that film and the technique don't lie. Don't lie, man. He's explosive, bro. He's that's explosive. Right. I think he's going to be do well with the Saints. I think um, Miles Murphy is going to do well with Cincinnati Bengals. Um, man, it, it, one thing I'm going to say right now, um, no crazy bold predictions, no 10 seconds. <laughs> But, but what I'm going to say right now is when, when you get on a team like uh, Cincinnati Bengals, right, you got a Joe Burrow, you got a uh, Jamar Chase, you got a, um, you got a T. Higgins on offense, um, and then you got a, a, a solid defense that's, that's very well coached um, mm-hmm. at, at every position defensively. Uh, they're, they're very well coached as a team for the that's Bengals. Right. And, and, and it was – Obvious to see when I was in the building, just watching and, and kind of being a fly on the wall with everybody. 
Got a chance to meet the defensive coordinator, man. I appreciate it. Uh, got a chance to meet, meet the head coach, first class organization. They will, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this right here, they will be competing, you know, uh, with a team like the Philadelphia Eagles to get to the Super Bowl and play in the Super Bowl. So, um, Absolutely. I can I, see it. I, I think, you know, just kind of getting off on a tangent a little bit, but I think it, it, it's truly – when you look at it, it's maybe four teams that you can just off the top of your head, just say, all right, yeah, Super Bowl contender. Why? It's because of the quarterback position, bro. I know this is a testimony, but you look at the Buffalo Bills, Josh Allen, Cincinnati right. Bengals, Joe Burrow, uh-huh. uh, Kansas City Chiefs, the, the Mahomes, come on. Uh-huh. Uh, and then you go through the Eagles, Jalen Hurts. Yep. Those four teams, they have a chance to go win a Super Bowl right That's now right. because of who they have at quarterback. And but you know it's crazy. The, the same the same team that you mentioned though, they all their D linemen are nasty. Yes. It it, it worked hand it worked hand in hand. Yes. It works hand in hand. Yes, bro. That's yes. and that's why they get all the money. That's why they get paid the most. Exactly. The edge rushers and the quarterback. And that's exactly it's why a, the Chiefs the Chiefs about to play um they about to pay um Jones very, very well. Oh bro. man, come on. As they, they should. <laughs> that dude, you know. man. And we can get off a little of the tangent right here too. Now, if you think about it, if we think about we think about Aaron Donald, and we think about Jones from the Kansas City Chiefs, right? Some people will argue you down right now that they will say that Aaron Donald is number two compared to them two. Uh you know, I know Aaron Donald is the sexiest. You know, he's he's. I mean, defensive player of the year. I mean, you got to give him that. You got to give him an edge off of that. But mm-hmm. as far as just impact, like the impact on, on a single team in a position group, I'm taking Chris Jones, man. I, I am. Bro, I am. Bro, I'm telling you, he, he is explosive, long, big, everything that you're looking for for an interior <laughs> defensive lineman. Just, just how – Aaron Donald, right, changed the Super Bowl. Chris Jones did the exact same thing. The exact, exact same, same thing. thing. Yep, exact same thing. Exact same thing. I, I'm, I'm going to tell you this right here. All of it goes hand-in-hand. Hand. Great quarterback with a great D-line, right? Facts. Usually when you got a good quarterback, your offense is going to be sufficient enough to to withstand a lot of stuff and, and, and keep your defense off the field as, as many snaps as they can and put up some points, right? Mm-hmm. And if you got a good defensive line, that's like the quarterback of your defense, you know, so to say. You know, when you look at it, it's, this is the nucleus of your defense, the D-line. And that's right. Usually, man, if you got those two, you're rolling pretty good. But I, I can tell you this right here, when you look at it, you look back on Georgia and Clemson's defense, all right? Mm. Georgia had one of the top 10 defense in the nation um, for the last maybe three or four, maybe five years. Mm-hmm. I mean, um, Kirby Smart era. Yeah, that's it. When, when Kirby went there, man, and, and took over, and um, he's a defensive coordinator by heart. He actually played there. That's his, that's his alma mater. Like, you know, he's going to make sure that they're on point. So, but when you look at it, w- was Clemson that great on defense? Hmm. I don't think they were in the top. They weren't in the top ten. They weren't in the top ten. They gave but a lot they was able to. They did, but they was able to stay afloat because of the D line. I know they had a, you know, some. They had some quarterback, you know, with uh, DJ, you know, up and down play. Yeah. But that's what was, what was able to, 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 whatever they sustained them with the defense line. Honestly, that's what, I was trying, that's what I was trying to get to, bro. Clemson had the the quarterback issues, right? Georgia didn't. Georgia has bad right. ones. I mean, I mean, dog. I mean, straight dog. But you know, it, it it's good to to talk about that, man. And that that's mm-hmm. kind of what I wanted to do tonight is to jump on, talk a little D line, yeah. Talk, man. You know, we got we got into it with Jalen Carter with Nolan Smith from Georgia now with the Philadelphia mm-hmm. Eagles. We got into it with um Miles Murphy. We got into it with Brian Breesey on from Clemson now with um the New Orleans Saints and the Cincinnati Bengals, man. Yep. Shout out to Trey Scott. Shout out to Nick Easton. Those guys are doing a heck of a job at, at their respective schools. And I know they're going to continue to be great. Um, That's right. Up front, uh, and, and coaching them. So, man, that, that was the main thing to get on here tonight. Yeah. I got, I, got one, I got one. I got one. One, one, one topic right here for you. One, one hot take. One hot take. Let's do All it. Right. Let's do it. 
Who is D line you right now in your eyes? D line you right now. D line you. You you gotta go. Oh, man, that's tough. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna shout out a, a few colleges. Okay. First, I'm, I'm gonna go. I'm, I'm gonna say you know Iowa always has a tough, tough D line. Um, I'm gonna shout out um, Georgia. Um, I'm gonna shout out Michigan. Okay. Mm-hmm. And Alabama. You got That's to. right. Got uh, to. Now, when you say D line, you. Now, if you're talking historically, yeah. like, I mean, I know, I know we talk, you know, a little bit about the Clemson guy, but historically, over the, you can say, you can go, you can date back 10 years, man. Clemson was, was, was D line, you there when they had that run mm-hmm. with the national. They yeah. were putting out some boys, man. Yeah, Dexter they Lawrence. Out, yeah, they put out got, some rounders now. <laughs> yeah, first rounders. Like yeah. how Georgia like how Georgia had three in the first Clemson were putting three in the first round. That's when so, they were in the national championship. Yeah. 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 Coach. So and, yeah. and even just if you date out, you can date all the way back to the Dequan Bowl area, man. Yeah. You know, you can go way back. You know, historically Clemson has, you know, put out some guys, man, and some some first rounders. So yeah. um R. 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 Peter Adams, he 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 came from there too. He was a dog. Um uh, but mm-hmm. man, yeah. And yeah, that that's that look, if you're thinking about it like that, then you know, I, I gotta throw Clemson in there too. But you know, for, yeah. for me right now, man, you right know, now, yeah. Right now I'm a Georgia boy, man, born and raised American. That's right. So I'm gonna go with UGA, man. D-man. Got got to home team. <laughs> that is <laughs> home team, man. And I and I I'm kinda along with you, man. Right along with, with Georgia. Bama and like I said, Michigan had a great run with with some cats too. And um, you know, and 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 it seems like sneaky, kind of sneaking in there, Florida State doing some making some noise, man. They they starting to get some attention down there. They they got a top edge guy this year that's for real, for real. Um so he'll he'll be a first rounder I gotta look out for. But um uh, yeah, I I say watch out for Florida State this year for sure. No doubt, no doubt, man. Well, that's good, brother. Just wanted to jump on here, man, and talk yeah, about man. some current stuff with the D-line, man, the trenches, man. As of tonight, man, that's trench mob testimonies, man, and we're out. Peace.